five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. In less than three years, SpaceX has launched about 1,800 satellites to build a network called Starlink. The world seems to have an insatiable appetite for bandwidth. Starlink is one of several projects to bring super fast internet to basically every corner of the Earth using satellites. Its rivals include Britain based OneWeb, a nascent initiative by Amazon, but also China's own satellite industry. The amount of traffic in space, and particularly in low Earth orbit, has increased dramatically, largely due to the Starlink. Now, rivals and countries are complaining that Starlink satellites have endangered other spacecraft. According to one tally by a British university, Starlink is involved in as many as 2,400 close encounters every week, about 58% of all such known incidents. Complaints have gotten louder in, in recent times as, as Starlink is growing. After China complained to the United Nations that its space station had to maneuver to avoid hitting a Starlink satellite, Musk responded that there's plenty of space in orbit. But as SpaceX alone wants to launch tens of thousands more satellites, scientists and critics are now raising safety concerns and calling for more regulation in space. To understand why Starlink has drawn so much criticism, first you need to know where these satellites are and how they work. SpaceX is Starlink. They're in low Earth orbit. Jonathan McDowell is a scientist at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, and he's been studying space programs around the world for over 40 years. The majority of the Starlink satellites are orbiting at their operational height of 550 kilometers. And that's different from the traditional broadband satellites we had before, which usually operate about 36,000 kilometers above the Earth ground. The closer distance allows the Starlink satellites to more easily provide faster internet speed, but the flip side is... You need thousands instead of like three or four to cover the whole world. Because a low orbit satellite is going to go overhead, rise above the horizon, and set again in just a few minutes. One issue is that low orbit is already quite crowded. There are other satellites used for purposes like monitoring weather or taking pictures, as well as older devices launched since the 1950s. And also, the International Space Station and China Space Station are located in that area. Not to mention tons of space debris from leftovers from earlier space missions and tests. On top of that, critics say Starlink satellites' movements are hard to predict because of the particular technology they use. They use what's called electric propulsion. Starlink is the only large constellation that's using electric propulsion uh, on a regular basis in low Earth orbit. It fires all the time, very slowly. Gradually is changing its orbit all the time. OneWeb also uses similar technology, but it only has a few hundred satellites. On the other hand, many satellites use chemical rocket engines to change course only when needed, and so most of the time they sit in a fixed orbit. So what are the actual risks of an accident happening in low orbit? In its recent complaint, China detailed two instances in which its space station found itself in the way of Starlink satellites. So this complaint kind of mirrors the complaints that have been made in the past about similar incidents. The European Union had a complaint like that in 2019. And then one year later, OneWeb, the British-based constellation, has made a similar complaint. China didn't call for specific action by SpaceX, but said countries are responsible for what happens in space under international treaties. SpaceX didn't respond to our request for comment on these incidents, but Musk has pushed back in a recent interview, claiming that space is big and there's room for tens of billions of satellites. Starlink has said its satellites are equipped with artificial intelligence to help avoid collisions, but it hasn't revealed details of the system. It's quite a large object, and if something that big hits you at that speed, it's going to completely disintegrate your spacecraft. And if it were to hit the, the Chinese space station, it would destroy it and kill all the people aboard. Satellites must fly at about 17,000 miles per hour in low Earth orbit, which is roughly 250 times faster than a car on the highway. Although no collision has been reported, such accidents could also be catastrophic because of the chain reactions they would potentially create, which is illustrated in this animated simulation by the European Space Agency. Two objects smash together, generate thousands of pieces of debris, which then hit other objects, which then carry more thousands of pieces of debris. Scientists say all these risks need to be factored in by everyone, not just Starlink, in the fast-growing industry. 
starting as market leader at the moment and other companies are trying to catch up. So I don't think we will see the frequency of launching these satellites subside. China hasn't started launching its own satellites, but has plans to build a constellation of more than 10,000. Amazon's Project Kuiper, which is set to test satellites in 2022, aims to build a network of more than 3,000. And OneWeb, which is controlled by Indian conglomerate Bharti Global and the UK government, wants to send more than 600 satellites into space. As all these satellites head to the skies, the race sets the stage for a global debate about how to regulate them. One of the points that, that critics and scientists are making is that this regulation needs to become more advanced and, and more uniform in order for countries to kind of work together in the same framework. But unfortunately, that process is a slow process, much slower than the rate at which commercial development and technology development is going. So I think it's actually a good sign that China is engaging in this in a public way. Presented to the UN really puts the issue of space traffic management higher on the agenda.